Although there is more to talk about in the genocide realm, this video is getting plenty long as is, so if you wanted to see the extended director's cut, be sure to subscribe. All right, we're doing this. Everyone, break out your angry fish lady music and your funny internet skeleton. We're taking on the Undertale genocide run. Let's go! I, uh, I don't have a cool YouTuber intro, so we're, we're just going to jump right into it. After completing the pacifist run and giving all of these characters you know and love their happiest ending possible, you're visited by Flowey, who warns you that the biggest threat to these characters, these monsters, is you. You, the player, have the power to take everything away and start a new story. A story that will bend to your very will. A story where you can experience all of this again, or see what happens when you try to destroy everything. What happens when you not only refuse to forgive, but take every excuse you can to cause harm to everyone around you? What if you decide to begin that fabled genocide run? Well, you're in for an experience that you will never forget. In the genocide run, I would like to talk about four main characters and dissect them for the themes of justice, injustice, and forgiveness. These four are, of course, Frisk, Papyrus, Undyne, and Sans. I want to go through each of these and really get to the core of what the genocide run amounts to and why so many people have attached themselves to this gripping tale of blood, dust, and tears. Firstly, there is Frisk, who I am calling it right now is not the same character as they were in the pacifist run. This Frisk is a terrifying force whose only goal is ruthless murder. The Frisk we knew before is gone. That Frisk that always forgave and loved everyone has been replaced by this hollow shell of a character, and the game does a really good job at telling the player that. The first thing of note is Flowey's conversation after Frisk leaves the ruins. Flowey, the only monster without a soul, asks Frisk if they, in fact, don't have a soul in them as well, if they are carelessly slaughtering everyone in their path for some hollow reason. We are on the same level as he is. Then there's Snowden. This is a very interesting choice and one that I absolutely love. It would have been so easy for Toby Fox to keep the dialogue and actions the same, but he didn't. The fun in the pacifist run is gone. Papyrus's traps are all completely ignored. The snow decahedron is gone! But most importantly, every feeling of fun and whimsy has been replaced by that hollow, empty feeling. The only satisfaction you are getting from this mass murder are the numbers. How many have you killed? How much love have you gained? This is all Frisk has, and it leaves this character as an empty shell shambling their way through the underground, heartlessly seeking out their next victims. At first, you can maybe justify Frisk killing all those monsters. After all, they did attack first. But what will happen when you come across someone who will refuse to fight? Will you succumb to your insatiable desire for blood and dust? Or will you accept their mercy? Papyrus is a very innocent character. From what we learned of him on the pacifist run, he is a very ambitious, albeit goofy character who couldn't tell the difference between a rock and a human. Or that's what we thought. In Genocide, Papyrus goes through his usual shtick of trying to capture the human, but when he can see that something is wrong, he is one of the first characters to point it out. There was this meme that I saw long before I had ever played the game, and I thought it was just talking about everyone being sad that they slaughtered one of the most innocent and beloved characters in the game. But oh boy, is it so much more than that. Papyrus' speech to Frisk before he is killed is harrowing. The way you shamble about from place to place, the way your hands are always covered in dusty powder, it feels like your life is going down a dangerous path. Papyrus is the only character who can see the good in Frisk. He sees their great potential and knows that they are capable of doing great things. And when Frisk finally kills them, he does not stop believing in them. Is he wrong? Is his belief somehow incorrect that someone so heartless could change? It's honestly hard to say. Toby Fox does a great job at not outright answering these questions here at this moment of the game. According to the pacifist run, of course everyone should be forgiven so that they could change. That was the excellent message shared to us from Azriel's story. But now, he's giving us a different experience. One where forgiveness doesn't work, where mercy does not give results and something else must happen in order for change to occur. Sometimes, we need to fight to the death for what we believe is right, and that is exactly where Undyne's story comes into play. Undyne is the first character who can actually take on Frisk. The most hardened warrior in the underground is finally going head to head with the most ruthless murderer this world has ever seen, and it is truly a battle to remember. 
Like Papyrus, Undyne gives a speech before the battle begins, but unlike Papyrus, mercy is not an option. Undyne sees you not as a person who has great potential, but as someone who must be stopped and slain at all costs. Undyne is brought to the brink of death trying to save a child, but through her sheer determination and her remembering those who love and care about her, she refuses to die. Sound familiar? While Papyrus' speech is heartbreaking because we know that Frisk is going to murder this very forgiving character, Undyne lets Frisk know exactly what they did and that they have the entire world against them. If you get past me, you'll, you'll destroy them all, won't you? Monsters, humans, everyone. Everyone's hopes, everyone's dreams vanquished in an instant. But I won't let you do that. Right now, everyone in the world, I can feel their hearts beating as one. And we all have one goal, to defeat you, human, no, whatever you are. For the sake of the whole world, I, Undyne, will strike you down. My favorite line throughout that whole speech is, of course, human, no, whatever you are, because Frisk isn't human. Frisk is an emotionless shell bent on the destruction of everyone around them. That's not human, that's a monster and a more terrifying monster that could very well exist within our own world today. And this fight lets you feel that. You can truly feel Undyne's righteous anger against Frisk, and her determination to see them fall to the ground makes for a fight you will never forget. And even when Frisk defeats her, she doesn't give up hope. Not for her people to see the sky, but that they can live on without being forced to fear or be carelessly slaughtered by the most terrifying monster in the underground. And this hope leads to one final battle, a fight that is nigh impossible, and one that Frisk finally no longer has the upper hand. The fight between Frisk and Sans is brutal. Frisk has gone throughout this entire world always being the one on top, and even their fight with Undyne felt like a battle of equals rather than a rigged chess game. But Sans has rigged that game in his favor. He will not take a hit from Frisk. He will come out with his strongest attack. He will slowly drain their health thanks to the sins crawling up on their back. He will attack when it isn't even his turn. And every single frame Frisk's soul is touching any of his attacks, it will take damage. This is the moment where Sans pulls on absolutely everything he knows and will destroy Frisk no matter what. The moment before the fight, Sans says this very famous line. It's a beautiful day outside. Birds are singing, flowers are blooming. On days like this, kids like you should be burning in hell. Frisk is. This battle is Frisk's purgatory, one where the only escape is to try again and again to beat Sans at his rigged game, or to give up and quit. Which is exactly what I ended up doing! Sans also does something very interesting thematically. While Papyrus only gives Frisk mercy, and Undyne only gives Frisk justice, Sans does both, with mercy having a very interesting twist. Sans will relentlessly battle Frisk until a massive turning point. Sans will spare Frisk, but no matter what happens, Frisk is going to suffer. Sans is ready to dodge the next attack, knowing that it is very likely Frisk will strike. But if Frisk accepts that mercy, Sans will ruthlessly murder Frisk declaring that if they're really friends, Frisk won't come back. Sans, both as a fight and as a character, is the antithesis of justice. He is always the final one to judge Frisk before they can see the king. He always knows more than he should, and he will do absolutely everything he can to force a monster such as the genocide Frisk to lay down their weapon and walk away. Forgiveness is something that we should all strive to do for others. No matter how bad or evil the person is, there is still always something human inside of them. But there will come a time, in fact I can guarantee it, where forgiveness does not work and action must be taken, either to run away or to stand your ground and defend yourself. While the genocide run is a tragic story from nearly every angle, there is one remaining fact throughout the whole story. Consequences will always be served. Whether it be today, tomorrow, or 30 years from now, people will always receive the result of their actions.
Thank you all for watching. I hope you really enjoyed my analysis on the genocide route of Undertale. If you haven't watched my pacifist analysis yet, feel free to do so. I apologize in advance for the audio quality. This was before I got this better mic. If y'all really enjoyed this, then let me know by subscribing and comment down below a game or movie that I should check out next. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, until next time.